Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 116. It's on harmonics. Harmonics are integers of the fundamental frequency. That's quite a mouthful. What does that actually mean? Well, the example of the guitar might help a little bit. So if we look at a guitar, there are some frets on it. You'll notice that there are some markings on the frets. But there's one special fret. It's called the 12th fret. And so what does that mean? The distance to here, from here to here, is about two feet. But if I take that distance times two, I get right to the end. And so a fundamental frequency is just um, plucking a string and it's the whole length of that vibrating string. We call it the fundamental frequency. And so we could look at it like this. This would be the fundamental frequency. At one end and the other end we just get these giant vibrations, these big what are called standing waves. This is the first harmonic. The second harmonic would look like this. second harmonic is going to have a note at the end, a note at the other end, but also a note here in the middle. And you'll notice that that comes right on the 12th fret, halfway between the two. We could also have the fourth harmonic that's going to be at the 12th fret, fret as well. And so if you really know how to play guitar, you can hold just briefly on the 12th fret. And as you strum it, you're not just going to have a fundamental frequency, but you're going to have all these frequencies on top of themselves. And this is what a skilled guitar sounds like when they're playing these harmonics. Pretty cool. So, standing waves, remember, are created when we have interference of waves going up and down and up and down. So that interference pattern creates these standing waves, waves that appear to not move. Now, if we have standing waves, the wavelength is determined by two things. First of all, it's determined by the boundary. In other words, the ends of that string, if we're talking about a guitar, it could be the ends of a tuba, if we're talking about some kind of a wind instrument. Um, if it's frequency, that's the other than, thing that can affect the wavelength. In other words, how fast we're vibrating the air inside it. And so let's give you an example of that. Let's say we're looking at the fundamental frequency for a given boundary of L or a given length of L. The fundamental frequency is going to be the distance where we can have a portion of a, of a wavelength fit inside there. Now if we think about this, how many wavelengths are in this boundary? Remember a wave goes up to the crest and then it has to go down to the trough. And so how many wavelengths with the fundamental frequency are fitting in this boundary? It's a half. And so really, if we look at what is the wavelength, the wavelength is going to equal two times the length. And so based on that boundary, we know immediately what's going to be the wavelength of that fundamental frequency. Now that we have that length, in other words, it's two times the length of the boundary, then we can plug that in to figure out the frequency. So frequency is the velocity of the wave divided by the wavelength. Remember, because velocity always equals frequency times wavelength, and so we're solving for frequency. And so what I can do is I can simply take this value two times the length of the boundary. I can plug that in here for my wavelength. I know the velocity or the speed inside that string or inside that chamber, and then I can solve for that frequency. Now what we've identified is the length and the frequency of the fundamental frequency. We call that the first harmonic. What would a second harmonic look like? It's going to look like this. And so a second harmonic, we can have an entire wave. Look, we go to the crest, and then we go to the trough, and then back again. And so in this case, what's going to be the wavelength? The wavelength is going to equal the boundary, because we can put one whole wavelength inside there. Once we know this, then we could figure out the frequency of the second harmonic. And then we could figure out the third harmonic. The third harmonic, here's a whole wavelength here, it goes up and then down. And so it would actually be, if we're looking at the length, it's going to be two-thirds the length. And so what's neat is once we know the boundary, we can figure out the wavelength. Once we know the wavelength, if we know the speed, then we can figure out the frequency. And so let's apply that a little bit. So let's say you're given a problem where you say we've got a string, it's two meters long, and you need to calculate what's going to be the wavelength. Well, that's pretty easy. We say that two... Um, lengths equals one wavelength. In other words, remember we have to go up and then we have to go down again. And so since L is 2, what's going to be my wavelength? I simply multiply it. So it's 4.0 meters using significant digits. So now let's go to the next one. So this would be the second harmonic. Wavelength of the second harmonic equals L. So what's going to be my length? My length now is going to be 2 meters. So you can see that the wavelength is getting shorter. If we keep going like this, so this would be the third harmonic. So our wavelength equals two-thirds the length. 
I could solve for my wavelength, 1.3 meters, and I could just keep going like that. You can see here for the fourth harmonic, that'd be one wavelength, and we're halfway to the length, and so it's gonna be like that, and so that would be the wavelength. Now, once we plug that wavelength in, you can see that as we're decreasing the wavelength, what's gonna to happen to the frequency? The frequency is gonna to have to go up. And so these are all the values we'd have for the first harmonics. You just figure out what harmonic are we doing, how many wavelengths would fit in. So let's say if we're looking at this one right here, here's one wavelength, so that wavelength, two sevenths of the length and then we could solve for the frequency. Let's get to calculating the wavelength and calculating the frequency. We're using a sim bucket simulation. So we've got a really long string. It's 7.5 meters long. It's almost like 30 feet long. And so it's gonna move back and forth like that. You can see in the simulation that I've covered up the wavelength. You can't see what that is, the period and the frequency. So we're gonna to try to figure out, first of all, what's the wavelength? Once we've got that, let's figure out the frequency. And so what harmonic is this? Well, we've got nodes on either side. And so we know that this is the first harmonic. And so what's our wavelength? 2L. And so now we just solve for that. So we're taking 2 times 7.5, which is the length. And so what's the wavelength of the fundamental frequency of the first harmonic? It's going to be 15 meters. Let's check in the simulation to make sure that's right. Yep, that's in centimeters, but 15 meters is right. Now that we've figured out the wavelength as 15 meters, let's figure out what the frequency is. Frequency, remember, equals the velocity or the speed divided by the wavelength. And in the simulation, we're given the speed as 100 centimeters a second, or that would be one meter per second. So it's one meter per second on the top. What's our wavelength? 15 meters on the bottom. And so what's going to be our frequency? 0 0.067 hertz. And so if we look at the simulation, that's right. Now, how could we go from here to figure out the period? Remember the reciprocal of that, one divided by the frequency is going to give you the wavelength. If you were to try one on your own, so first of all, you have to figure out what harmonic this would be. So we've got how many wavelengths fit in there. So this would be the second harmonic. How many wavelengths fit in? Just one. So we know that the wavelength equals the length of the boundary. So we've got that. Now that we know the whole length is 7.5, we could figure out that the, the wavelength is 7.5 as well. And now if we want to figure out the frequency, what's the frequency going to be? Well, we've got the same speed through the string or through the wires. So our velocity is going to be the same. It's going to be 1 divided by 7.5, which is our wavelength again. Our wavelength at this, at this point has gotten smaller. So what's that going to do to our frequency? Our frequency is actually going to increase. So if we check that out, 0.13 is going to be hertz of our frequency, and then we're going to have a period that's less. And so you can see that as we move up in harmonics, what happens to the wavelength? It becomes smaller, and as a result, what happens to the frequency? The frequency is going to go up. So did you learn to uh, understand what harmonics are and how to calculate them based as an integer value of the fundamental frequency? And then finally, are you able to calculate the wavelength and then the frequency for a given standing wave? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.